Hello, Hardies, and welcome to the Hardies Hotline, your connection to Hope Valley, hosted by Caroline, myself, Cami, and Casey. Thanks to Brian Bird for letting us use the music on our show. Now grab that paprika-filled shepherd's pie and sit back and relax. Here we go. Hello, Hardies! Welcome to Hardies Hotline, your connection to Hope Valley. I am Cami Clements, and I am joined by my lovely co-host, Caroline Richardson. Hey. Hi, Caroline. Hey. And I'm probably not supposed to do this, but I am going to do it anyway. <laughs> so not on the day of the release, but the day that we are recording this it's caroline's birthday yay, <laughs> yay caroline the big three oh yes <laughs> welcome to the 30s club because <laughs> <laughs> i am not out of it yet yay <laughs> All right so today we will be discussing season one episode four secrets and lies <laughs> now one thing that casey and i talked about with uh, episode three was the fact that this episode was so perfectly set up mm -hmm. by it uh episode three set this episode up so perfectly Mm -hmm. There was a ton of foreshadowing that you don't really realize is foreshadowing until it gets there. Mm -hmm. And then you realize that you've been prepared all along. Mm -hmm. And, and once again, once again, just the momentum is not lost. No. You know, the, I mean, <laughs> so first we deal with a teacherage being burned down. <laughs> <laughs> and meeting a very handsome Mountie. And mm -hmm. then we deal with eviction. Mm -hmm. Then we deal with a church burning down. And now we're dealing with an accusation of that mm -hmm. church being burned down. <laughs> I mean, that's, uh, that's, that's a lot. <laughs> that really is a lot. Like, I forgot yeah. about how much they really packed into these first several episodes. Like, but looking back, I'm like, oh, whoa, like they, they really did like bring, like keep bringing, like you want to watch it, you know, they, they want to keep you watching. So yeah. they have all this like interesting stuff. Like I forgot that it was like this back to back, you know what I mean? Yeah. It did not lose steam mm -mm. at all. And uh, you, it just made you want to curl up in a blanket and mm -hmm. just go, uh, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's kind of the, you know, the, the old cliche wrapped in a blanket and eating popcorn like this while, you, while you're staring at the screen. Speaking of blankets, this is the perfect time to do a special shout out to Edify Films, Yay. which brought you this lovely hat and the lo lo lovely sweatshirt that Caroline's wearing Yay. today. And just remember how much there is. There are mugs, there are all different types of t-shirts. You can get onesies for your toddlers, which dang it, all of my kids are growing out of it. I'm so mad. So Elliot, there's an idea, make t-shirts for tweens. There, there you go. go. <laughs> and, uh, and the puzzles are the big thing now. You can pre-order one of those beautiful puzzles or both if you want. And the uh, seasons one through seven collector's edition, mm -hmm. that, that's a big one too. My, uh, my husband got that for me for Christmas. <laughs> I'm putting that on my list. Oh man, I, I begged him. I said, mm -hmm. I will not ask you for another thing. Just please, please, please. Can I have it, please? <laughs> anyway, so back to the episode. It was the perfect way to end mm -hmm. episode three. And they pick up right where they left off mm -hmm. with Jack finding the can of whale oil and 
it's so interesting how he so casually brings it into conversation and then very quickly it turns into a line of questioning Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and one thing that i noticed is that cat is incredibly natural there's no trying to hide it Mm -hmm. there and you know that obviously you know that she did not set the fire Mm -hmm. but the storyline is how is that going to be proven and so Mm -hmm. but that was that was one thing that i noticed really really early on was that she didn't make any effort to hide it Mm -hmm. she wasn't upset that jack found her whale oil oil. she did yeah she just said oh i see you found my stash of whale oil or whatever she said and and then it must be pretty hard to come by uh yes it is i have to special order it you know so Mm -hmm. there's no there's no pretense Mm -hmm. which uh which totally should be a clue but of course jack is doing his job and Mm -hmm. all of that so let's uh Let's cut to James bullying poor Albert. Oh, it makes me so sad. I love on um, pockets. He is the most adorable kid. I know. <laughs> he is such an adorable kid, and he's so natural on the screen, mm-hmm. which this is something that that we discussed in episode three with Rosaline, mm-hmm. that it is hard to come by a child actor who truly can look at home on the screen, you know, because children have a hard time not overcompensating for the camera. Adults have a hard time mm-hmm. <laughs> sometimes not over, not overcompensating for the camera, but it's especially difficult for children sometimes. These kids do not have a hard time looking at home on the camera. Mm -hmm. And their performances are on par with any adult in the show. Mm -hmm. And it's just so, so beautiful to watch Albert's interaction with Elizabeth. And even with James, it's a very raw and real performance Mm -hmm. anyway they're very lucky to have the hope valley or coal valley the coal valley yeah yeah, the coal valley kids yeah Yeah. exactly exactly so (sighs) anne shirley comes (laughs) to mind here Mm -hmm. (laughs) elizabeth was very much an anne shirley here you know, the, the mm-hmm. way that, uh, the way that she so smoothly gives mm-hmm. James his consequence. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, uh, if you, if you remember, I don't even know, are you an Anna Green Gables fan? Uh, yeah. I do. Okay. So if you remember an Anna Vavinley, you mm-hmm. remember how she, how she goes up and she's, uh, and she sees, uh anthony and mm-hmm. his father yeah and oh thank you anthony for volunteering mm-hmm. with tommy to whitewash the outhouse for me on saturday <laughs> just handles Nosh- yeah. it yeah yeah just handles it like a boss and she's just so smooth and cool and that's exactly what this moment reminded mm-hmm. me of with elizabeth She's gotten more confident in her in her teaching, like since episode one and stuff. And you can see how how she 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 lets them is I like seeing that. It was good. Yeah. Well, and even in such a short time, you know, you forget how seamlessly she found her footing. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's not until you go back to the beginning and you go, hello, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
but yeah, she's already comfortable Mm -hmm. and she's already putting her foot down without the screaming Mm -hmm. and, you know, and she's the sly cat catching them in the act. So there's nowhere to hide. (laughs) So yeah, I really, I really loved that moment about her. So then we get to Elizabeth visiting Kat. Mm -hmm. Now, this is, this is an interesting scene. What, uh, what are, tell me, tell me when some of your thoughts on this scene. It was, it was different. Like, cause like, I, I felt so bad for, I, felt, I just felt bad for the whole situation. So. Yeah. Uh, one thing that, one thing that I noticed was that this really it's a very very small thing and it's a moment that passes by so quickly Mm -hmm. but when when Kat asked Elizabeth Jack hasn't said anything to you Mm -hmm. and she sounds so surprised Mm -hmm. but I think that that was a very big boost in confidence Mm -hmm. because it's very obvious that Elizabeth and Jack have formed a rapport even Mm -hmm. if they're not a couple yet Mm -hmm. everybody in town can see that it's going that way Mm -hmm. except the two of them (laughs) but uh but it's very obvious that the two are forming a connection and it I think it's very relieving to the town and its citizens that Jack is not spilling the beans all over the place about all the cases. Mm -hmm. He knows how to keep confidentiality. He knows how to keep his mouth shut, period. Mm -hmm. And I just think that that in that one little moment, I think that raises the level of trust that they have. And even though Kat is in a horrible situation, and she does not want to talk about it. Mm-hmm. I, I think that it kind of gives her one more degree of confidence mm-hmm. in, in Jack's investigative skills. Yeah. Yeah. So here's another thing. Uh, Elizabeth remembers whale oil being used by her, uh, on her father's boats. Mm-hmm what for i know (laughs) she remembers that it smokes Mm -hmm. you know it can't really start a fire per se but she Mm -hmm. remembers that it smokes and she remembers that it stinks to high heaven Mm -hmm. what do they use it for (laughs) yeah so if there are any boatmen out there listening what did or historians what Mm -hmm. What was whale oil used for? My guess is some kind of lubrication. Yeah. You know, to, to keep the gears running or something. I don't know. I, I don't know. I wouldn't want to, it, it smells, I wouldn't want to be around it if it smelled like that. <laughs> they probably all had those old fashioned clothespins mm-hmm. hanging on their nose. <laughs> I don't know. So I, yeah, I have no idea what whale oil would be used for on a ship. Mm-hmm. So uh, if you know the answer, please let us, know. let us know. But that also brings up a really good point because Elizabeth is very familiar with whale oil, obviously, and she knows that it doesn't burn. It just smokes. Mm-hmm. It's like trying to set a fire to the church with a bunch of green wood. It wouldn't happen very easily until Mm -hmm. unless a spark happened Mm -hmm. to catch on the actual structure Mm -hmm. so that that is that is helpful but there's still so much uncertainty which emily feels Mm -hmm. oh gosh this (laughs) this scene Mm -hmm. so i have five older brothers Mm -hmm. And I remember being Emily's age 
and getting up at night and being scared and going in to see them and every once in a while they would let me cuddle in bed with them for a little bit or I would sleep on the beanbag chair in their room so I wouldn't Uh have to be alone so (laughs) that that this scene right here with Gabe Uh is so tender Uh especially because we see Gabe as so impatient, so angry, mm-hmm. and so emotional in a high strung kind of way. Mm-hmm. And you know, and for the rest of the episode until the very end, we see more of that. So this is a nice mm-hmm. relief. And we get mm-hmm. to just see him be a big brother. And a really good big yeah, brother. Yeah, say he's a really sweet big brother. Yeah, like, he he br- does he does not act mm-hmm. sweet to Miles mm-hmm. later in the episode, and he becomes more of the bullying big brother. But it's but different, with sister. Like, because it is because my my brother, even though they're two minutes older than me, they <laughs> um they are my big brothers, and they right. would, like if I wasn't feeling good or something, they would come and sleep in my bed with me to protect me and stuff. So uh-huh. just that's just a brother and sister thing, I think. So yeah, yeah, and so it was. So it was very sweet to just take a break from the high strung emotions and the anger and the mean older brother to just see him be a sweet older brother because he could have just mm-hmm. sent her back to bed easily, mm-hmm. easily, but. And that was, I remember watching, watching it for the first time and thinking, oh my gosh, did Gabe burn down the church? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that was my, that was my thing. I was like, oh my gosh, did he, no, do not tell me that he did it. You know, it's just the look in his eye. Mm-hmm. So I swear people have the worst timing coming in to Jack's office (laughs) because in the previous episode it was the Reverend Anderson coming in twice and both times he just happens to be playing with With Rip Rip. (laughs) he's not lazy he's not slacking he's not a bad mounty he's mm-hmm. just happened to be taking one a time. break yeah. that one time well and then that one time another time you mm-hmm. know, just... oh my goodness oh my goodness so that becomes that becomes a difficulty because now we have bad timing once again <laughs> We have Spurlock and Gowan coming in to Jack's office and trying to interrogate him and trying to bully him and giving them information. And mm-hmm. and Spurlock getting snide with him. Like, no. I may I may have run into you at the academy, but then I got a real job with the Pinkertons. I was like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> you just want to punch the guy's yeah. lights out. Uh, but, uh, and then, and then right when Gowan is saying that he's suspicious of Kat, Gabe bursts in and almost confirms that she should be a suspect. I know. What is with bad timing on the cross the heart? Oh my gosh, you you wanna uh you wanna you just wanna say that line from the th- the Disney version of Three Musketeers. It's Tim Curry's line. He goes, bad timing. <laughs> you just you I just oh gosh, you just wanna say that over and over because they he keeps on having all of this terrible timing that is totally not his fault. So I know, bless his heart, in the best way possible. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, 
So one thing I do have to say about Jack, this entire time throughout this whole scenario, uh, he really keeps his cool. Mm -hmm. And that once again, I think should put a notch up in his defense and put the level of trust up a bit because he never becomes a tyrant. He never says, I am the law. You're going to do what I say. He is totally calm, totally cool, even though, you know, when Gabe gets right up in his face and he says, I swear I'll fight you. Uh -huh. I mean, I could see somebody of a lesser character laughing in the kid's face. Uh -huh. like, you think you can take me? Uh -huh. <laughs> do you know the kind of training I've had? You know, and he doesn't do that. Uh -huh. He he treats Gabe very seriously. It's a it's a true testament to the level head moral character that he is. Uh -huh. Because he doesn't the other thing is he doesn't stoop to low levels to like somebody else. Yeah, like somebody else to investigate a problem. Mm -hmm. And and I think like he he wants Gabe to trust him, and so he won't. So he wants to treat Gabe like he's an like an adult and not like a little kid. So I I think that's sweet that Jack wants to to help him like that. Yeah, he doesn't him. he doesn't want to burn bridges even mm -hmm. with a fourteen year old. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So then we're back at school and we have that beautiful brief little moment that just, you know, keeps up the consistency of the timeline mm -hmm. with Elizabeth saying how beautiful the sound of Rosaline's voice is, mm -hmm. you know, just, mm -hmm. just a tweak of a reminder of what happened in the previous episode just to keep it on our minds mm -hmm. you know and to and to say it's not forgotten mm -hmm. and that i just i loved that brief little moment and then in comes jack <laughs> a little bit more humbly than mm -hmm. he has in previous episodes <laughs> saying that he actually needs her help it's uh none of that it's none of that uh what's the line that he says in the first episode uh criminals or for criminals or for mounties not yeah. for teachers yeah. is that what it is mm -hmm. uh so there's none of that this time mm -hmm. he, he needs her help and he uh so yeah even though she's very upset with him once again, it is obvious that he's trying to do this investigation the right way. Mm -hmm. And so I think that Elizabeth develops a little bit of a reluctant respect for him at this point. They have respect mutually between the two of them, but, you know, kind of a rich girl reaction. He passes her on the road and doesn't say hello. Mm -hmm. And that, and that miffs her and <laughs> which I don't think should be that big of a deal I know. he's a mountie obviously he was in a hurry you mm -hmm. know and you're like, he was so rude no he wasn't he just didn't say hello <laughs> anyway but uh so i think that she's reluctant to admit the fact that he's doing this the correct way by asking for her help but uh, but she still has to admit it, even mm -hmm. though it's her friend being accused, he's going about it the right way. Mm -hmm. So uh, do you think there was any rhyme or reason to the order? I mean, storyline wise, there was, mm -hmm. but I'm talking about, I'm talking about in Jack's mind. Do you think there was any particular reason why? He did Miles, then Gabe, then Emily. I guess to see maybe if the like if their stories lined up, maybe. You know. Well, yeah, yeah. He he put he put them separately to mm -hmm. see if their stories lined up, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, but I was I guess because curious. If, I guess maybe if there was any rhyme or reason to the order. 
I guess do Emily last because she's the little, like the youngest. I don't know. I don't... See, I would think if it didn't fit in the storyline, I would think he would do the youngest first. Mm -hmm. You know, to kind of get it out of the way and mm -hmm. not and not make her stew in her own nervousness. Yeah, because it's obvious that she was a little bit nervous. But mm -hmm. I love Emily's candor mm -hmm. and just her little girl honesty mm -hmm. and. This is this is one other thing that I love about Jack's character. He comes down to her level. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't try to use any difficult vocabulary. He doesn't try to be businesslike. He just mm -hmm. talks. He talks mm -hmm. to her. Uh, something something that I really noticed is when when he talks about dads mm -hmm. you can see the flicker in his eye mm -hmm. we don't know the history behind his dad right now but you can tell that a father being lost is a sore subject mm -hmm. and it's just it's very sweet to see that even though he's a professional and he's a police officer uh mm -hmm. and conducting a, a uh, a, an investigation he's human and mm -hmm. this and this topic still Her, affects yeah. him mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> so and then I just I love what I love what Elizabeth says the truth is always the right answer mm -hmm. but the problem is that there are two different versions of truth because we have Gabe saying that Kat got back late that night. Mm -hmm. And then we have Emily saying she got mm -hmm. back early in the morning, right? When the, mm -hmm. when, the ro <laughs> when the rooster was crowing. So with that version of the truth, Elizabeth and Jack go to Kat's house. Mm -hmm. What did you think about Elizabeth insisting that she go along? I think she she knew something else. Like she knew there was something else going on that Kat didn't want to like, you know, she just knew something else was happening. That's what I think. Yeah. Um, so professionally, it's mm -hmm. a mistake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a very big mistake. You know, if you're going to go accuse my friend, do, 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 that's the last time that you want someone to be involved. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you, that's the last time you want someone to come along is when they are emotional about their friend being accused. However, as lame as the help was, mm -hmm. As lame as the help was, it's a good thing that Elizabeth was there because Jack took Kat immediately mm -hmm. to go and be questioned at the jail because she wouldn't talk there. Mm -hmm. And so <laughs> she tried. She, she tried so hard, but at least there was an adult present because if there mm -hmm. hadn't if mm -hmm. there hadn't been if there hadn't been an adult present then there would have been even more of a problem mm -hmm. <laughs> so even if they did starve a little bit <laughs> she tried because if you remember, Abigail is still gone in this episode. She's yes, not in this episode. So she can't even help. So they can't go back to Abigail's and have Abigail cook them something decent. <laughs> the scary part. Yeah, yeah. Abigail's still gone. So um, I wish mommy were here. Her biscuits wouldn't make a sound. <laughs> Oh dear. Yeah. Oh, oh dear. Oh dear. 
Yeah, it, uh, it, it yeah, poor, poor Elizabeth. Poor Elizabeth. <laughs> she, she has adapted, but not that much. <laughs> she, her, her cooking skills are still on par with, say, uh, uh, I would even venture a guess that Emily would be better at Elizabeth. <laughs> Gabe can cook. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I. I don't know who she would be on par with. <laughs> uh, a rich girl who's never cooked before. Oh wait, yeah. that's her. <laughs> at least she's trying. Yes. At least she's trying. She gave it a good go. <laughs> Uh, I don't know about a good go, but she gave it a go. <laughs> a for effort. <laughs> a for effort. So we have a bit of a tense moment. Cat has to be locked up while the story goes and gets verified. Mm -hmm. We don't know what that story is. I remember getting a detention for the first time ever mm -hmm. and my face looked exactly like cats <laughs> when she was getting locked up in that cell now granted being put in jail is a whole lot different than getting a detention but it was the exact same kind of feeling mm -hmm. you know she has never had trouble with the law she's an upstanding citizen she's never had a reputation for anything ill mm -hmm. and now she's being put in prison mm. i mean just the look on her <clears throat> face and in her eyes of terror at the yeah her eyes yeah the idea of being locked up and then add on top of that that she's a little freaked out by the choice of pinkerton mm -hmm. who's uh, uh which one it, <laughs> does it matter mm -hmm. you know jack's very quick to pick up on that mm -hmm. but it's oh mm -hmm. it's uh yeah it's Dun, dun, dun. You, start the, yeah. <laughs> you got more you got more uh Short, yeah. you got more foreshadowing to, mm -hmm. and then we have the store when mm -hmm. dotty and whoever she's with they don't say her name but uh i think it was miriam or cynthia Mm -hmm. from from a previous episode but i could be wrong um but so dotty and her companion there they are all kindness and helpfulness in front of the children's faces and they don't walk 10 steps before they start, before they start gossiping about her and like we were just saying cat doesn't have a tawdry or irreputable reputation at all. Mm -hmm. And one thing happens and the gossip chain starts happening. Mm -hmm. you know, it just shows how fickle that gossip chain is, you know? <laughs> it, and that, I think that that is something that is shown many times many times in in the first little bit is how harmful and how quickly mm -hmm. gossip can spread yes yeah so gabe hears this gossiping mm -hmm. and it's funny the way he takes it mm -hmm. once again he's a very high strung young boy you mm -hmm. know <laughs> He, he he takes things to heart very quickly and instead of getting angry at the women for gossiping he runs over to the jail and says you did it didn't you mm -hmm. you know i i thought that was a very unexpected mm -hmm. and very interesting reaction yeah but, because it's not what I was expecting at all. Me either. 
Yeah, it's it's not what you would think would happen. You would think that he would get upset at the women and maybe just run home, but he takes it as verification of her, mm -hmm. of her guilt. Yeah, that she did it. So, I thought he would have been, at first I thought he was running to Jack, like, like going to be angry at Jack. Oh, that's, that's a good point. Well, mm -hmm. he can't find Jack. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. <laughs> shooting it all at it, his mother is the mm -hmm. next best thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. Let's talk about pockets and Elizabeth for a minute. Aww. So first of all, What's the what's the first thing that Elizabeth finds on her desk from him? Is it the, the little trinket thingy? The um No, it's not the trinket. That's what he that's what he gives her second. Oh yeah, the is it the neck the jewelry? No. No? Okay, then I <laughs> I should have made that a trivia question. I know. <laughs> the bird. Yes, the bird. Yeah, I knew that. Yeah. That's, I knew that, yeah. The wooden bird. Mm -hmm. Yeah, is that what you meant by trinket? Yeah, yeah. Oh, my bad, my bad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when you said trinket, I thought you meant the jewelry. Mm -hmm. So, my bad. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, the wooden bird that he mm -hmm. obviously carved, and he's obviously very, very good at it. And you can totally tell it's from him with his little mm -hmm. face looking <laughs> up. <laughs> obviously nursing a hopeless crush on his teacher uh uh like many children before him i'm sure and like many children after him <laughs> but he's so sweet about it mm -hmm. it's, and i and then when he gives her when he gives her the necklace I think that this is one of the sweetest realizations for Elizabeth about what she means to mm -hmm. these kids. At the end of season one, and we'll get to that when we get to it, obviously, but at the end of season one, there's a very big showing of how much she means to the kids, but that's after it's been a while. Mm -hmm. you know and they and they don't want to lose her and the threat of her leaving is on on yeah. their minds and it's in the wind mm -hmm. there's no threat of her leaving there's no reason for a big gesture mm -hmm. to show how mm -hmm. much she means to them it's just a show mm -hmm. of very innocent love yeah no <laughs> got you gotta you gotta love you gotta pockets. love pockets you gotta love pockets um and she handles this situation so so well when he says i knew you used to be rich mm -hmm. and i thought this would make mm -hmm. it easier for you to be here for him to not just be, ah, oh, Miss Thatcher, ah, oh, you know, lovey-dovey. Mm -hmm. He's thinking. Mm -hmm. He's not only feeling, but he's thinking. Mm -hmm. And he's incredibly, he's an incredibly thoughtful little boy. Mm -hmm. You know, it just, it's, it's really beautiful the way that he's taking into consideration how she must be feeling and he wants to make her feel more comfortable mm -hmm. in her situation and he's doing the best that he can to make that happen mm -hmm. and she is so touched and says the most perfect thing that she could rich girls don't care about fancy gifts they care about gifts from the heart i'm paraphrasing of course mm -hmm. and someday someday you will make somebody a very lucky girl oh that's so you know, sweet I just, she handles it so so well mm -hmm. so skipping 
to skipping to the Reverend Anderson's visit to <laughs> to the Montgomery house. Once again, that man has terrible timing because Gabe and Miles start yelling at each other. <laughs> And Elizabeth has a very pink chicken in the oven. Just first it's black and now it's pink. Plus, <laughs> almost there. Oh, that poor girl. That poor girl. So then once again, we have, then once again, we have Emily's very innocent revelation of information. Mm -hmm. I found mommy's necklace. No, honey, the, you must be mistaken. And no, the man who wanted to marry mommy. And yes. we, fi we find out that those were not his intentions. That's just what she told her children. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So now we go to the story. Finally, the whole truth comes out. Let me, let me ask you a question. Would you have done, would you have handled the situation the way that Kat did? If I was in the same situation as Kat, like if yes. I was like, yeah, yeah. If you were in the same situation, would, protect, you, yeah. would you be willing to go to those kinds of lengths, even being put in prison yourself mm -hmm. just to protect your husband's good name. Mm -hmm. For your kids, yeah, definitely, yeah. See, I would be willing to do that for my children, mm -hmm. but the only problem is then my name's tarnished and I am alive, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. if, if things had gone badly, if things had if things had gone badly, then what would have happened to those kids? Mm. You know, her reputation would have been in ruins. And I don't I don't know. I I would have wanted to protect the children so they could have a good, clean memory of their father. Mm -hmm. But there are ways around that. Mm -hmm. You know, there are ways to do that. You can ask that the file be kept confidential. You can, because the people didn't know. There were two people who, uh, there were two people who knew about it, Jack and Elizabeth, and of course, Spurlock. But, um, but there were, there was Jack and Elizabeth. And if, and if she asked them, to keep it confidential and away from the children, they totally would have, you know, so I just, I think I, so, yeah. yeah. So I just, you know, she put herself, it, it just goes to show you the amount of sacrifice that she is willing to give of herself, because I do not know that I would have done that. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, I would have wanted to protect my children and I would have wanted them to have a good memory of their father, but I don't know that I would have gone to jail. Yeah, I wouldn't have gone to jail. Just to protect his good name. I'm like, I'm alive, you're dead. I have to, I have to take over. I have to provide. Yeah. Sorry, sweetheart. <laughs> I still love you. I still love you, but sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I, that is one thing I do not have to worry about because my husband's not a gambler. So, <laughs> so I don't have to worry about that. Kind of thing. <laughs> but so we hear the full story and we hear just how much of a snake Spurlock is. The worst. Oh my gosh. It's just, the man is gross. I know. <laughs> The man has no qualms mm -hmm. about the about what he would do to Cat. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, talk about a reputation being soiled. But the the idea of having a debt paid off for friendly favors. Mm. Mm. <laughs> 
I, oh, I, I would rather live in a tent. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, nope, not going to happen. So then we go to Spurlock's cabin and I think, I think that Elizabeth showed pretty good restraint. She doesn't know that he's a criminal yet, mm-hmm. but she does know that he's a a bit creepy Mm -hmm. (laughs) and that he was propositioning cat so i really think that she showed a fair amount of acting skills and i'm not talking about aaron i'm talking about elizabeth Elizabeth, yeah yeah elizabeth showed a great amount of acting skills to not reveal how low Freak she out. knew he was <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and then we have the big moment uh. <laughs> i mean she heard about whiskey runners and outlaws and she probably got held at gunpoint when she was being stage robbed mm-hmm. yeah with the stagecoach but not by someone in her own community <laughs> i mean that must have been truly terrifying mm-hmm. if i were her i would have ran straight to the um stage to say bye see you later <laughs> I mean, and he cocked the gun. I know. We don't know. We don't know the situation with the outlaws, if they just held the gun or if they actually cocked it. But I mean, he cocked the gun and it was pointed straight at her. You know, and it just, <laughs> I do not blame her for the reaction that she had. And then the lone ranger rides in and saves the day but in in a very real sense Mm -hmm. so we've gotten we've gotten to see a lot of firsts with jack as a mountie you know Mm -hmm. because we didn't see him at any previous assignments so you know, we, we saw his wit and Mm -hmm. that could, that, that could help the opinion that he's a second rate Mountie, the way that Elizabeth says. So we saw a lot of wit and now we've started to see real investigative skills. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we've got, cause following after Gabe, you know, he, following an instinct, yeah, but you know, now looking around the burn site and figuring out if Cat is the arson, the arsonist, and you know, all of that, we're really starting to see his mind tick, and we've started to also see him investigate uh, the mine accident itself with reading up on it. But once again, I more consider that research, very important skill to have, but we haven't really seen the big Mountie skills. Mm -hmm. And now we're starting to see the investigative skills and, and the, and the figuring and the questioning. And now we witness the very first rescue. Yay. Yay. And just the shout, are you okay? I just, <laughs> yeah. And the hug. I, uh, well, of course the hug, you know, <laughs> of course <laughs> we love the hug, <laughs> but it's, uh, but just that, that is a true hero moment right mm-hmm. there. And then to, to let everything quiet down, we get to our conclusion. We see Kat in Sunday school talking about her scandal, which 
I good on her. Mm-hmm. Good on good on her for just going at it with the lightness because we've already seen the emotional. Mm-hmm. You know, and we see the emotional reunion and we see Gabe in tears saying, I'm so sorry, Ma. And her complete forgiveness her complete unrequited love for her children not holding any doubts that they had against them Mm -hmm. it's immediate acceptance immediate love immediate hugs and kisses Mm -hmm. which i just there there is a lot of that in coal valley we saw it with molly and rosaline now we're seeing it with cat and her children it's such a beautiful thing to see. It really, really is. So we're so we're talking about uh, the scandal that Cat had, and Reverend Anderson does a really, really big thing here. Mm-hmm. He apologizes in front of the entire congregation. Mm-hmm. which takes a lot of guts. Mm-hmm. And then he has no expectation to stay. Mm-hmm. He leaves. Mm-hmm. You know, it. he he just says, well, I've said my piece. I'm going to go. Mm-hmm. And he could have easily assumed the, assumed the authority and, uh, and taken over. But he doesn't. He is completely unassuming and says, um, and 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 says, well, um, goodbye. And she stops him. Gets him to stay. She stops him and says, Mm -hmm. and says, it's been a long time. Would you please lead us this morning? Which is another very big thing for her to do. Mm -hmm. I just. It's there, there's forgiveness and reconciliation going on all over Coal Valley. And it's just after such big, huge events, it truly is beautiful to see. So <laughs> then we come to our sweet little ending. Aww. And can I just tell you, <laughs> I took the I took the picture of this rowboat ride and I framed it and I put it in my new house. Oh, <laughs> I just cute. tore the page out of an old calendar and I hung it in my kitchen. <laughs> it's like this is now going to be part of my decor. <laughs> but we have the rowboat. So thanks for the incident oh you mean the little incident where i saved your life oh yes that (laughs) Um, you and you gotta love how he tries to lighten the whole how he tries to pass off the comment by saying i would have done the same for anybody in coal valley oh yes of course however having a grizzled miter with a three-day-old beard jump into my arms wouldn't have been as pleasant. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Then we have our uninvited guests. Uh, I would have freaked out too. I totally would have freaked out. I'm not scared of spiders, but to have one that big on my shoulder, yeah, I would have freaked out. But here's the big thing. He let the spider go in the boat. I know. Throw it away. Let it swim to shore. You know? (laughs) He let the spider go in the boat. It's just not that that would not be the ideal place to put him. <laughs> so and then of course we have that very that very close moment mm-hmm. with the <clears throat> resume our regular activities and the little smile at the end of it all. <laughs> with acknowledging what just happened so cute it's so adorable it really is and there we have it there is our recap for episode four secrets and lies now here comes 
the trivia are you ready caroline yeah i think i think <laughs> okay what color was albert's hat was it brown okay i'll take it it was tan with stripes yeah that's yeah mm -hmm. all right all right all right elizabeth tells the montgomery children to soften the biscuits with gravy to which miles answers or uh oh man now i can't i know what it oh man i can't remember i know what it is but i can't remember a sledgehammer. Yeah, a sledgehammer. <laughs> what items do Elizabeth and the Montgomery kids buy from the mercantile to go and cheer up Cat? Soap? <laughs> no. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> No, nothing? no, no. Pretzels, Pretzels, gingerbread, beef jerky, and then Elizabeth adds licorice sticks. Well, that's a good one too. <laughs> okay, so this one, it's a range. Okay, I I will con I will consider a range. Mm -hmm. How many candles can we see hanging in the tree? at Spurlock's cabin. What's the range? Like what's the I'll I'll accept a range of numbers. So your answer has to be a range. Okay. Okay. Well, it doesn't have to be, mm -hmm. but I will I will ex I will accept it. Up to 10? Yes, very Okay, good. So we can see 6 clearly but mm -hmm. it can possibly be 10. So okay. Okay. I will give that one to you. Yay! <laughs> okay, final question. What kind of sandwich did Elizabeth make for the picnic in the rowboat? Roast beef. Yay! You did it! All right, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget our Tuesday rewatches. We are changing up time so that our international hardies can join us. But every Tuesday, every Tuesday, we are rewatching the episode. So please come and join us so that you are all prepared for the episode to come out the next day. Yay. Thank you so much, Hardies. Thank you so much, Caroline. It was and, fun. Yeah, and we'll see you later. Bye. Bye. Thanks so much for joining us on Hardy's Hotline. For more juicy details and to see what's coming up, be sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Hardy's Hotline. And we drop an episode every Wednesday, so we'll see you then. Until next time. <laughs>